to turn to Eric uh, Fresson, uh, visiting academic university Brunei Darussalam and Research Institute on Contemporary Southeast A Asia, that's Erosec CNRS. And uh, Eric is uh, going to discuss the South China Sea disputes in a COVID and Indo-Pacific context, um, which is a, a very um, ambitious uh, scope. Uh, so over to you, Eric. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me, yeah? Yes. And you can see the, the slide. No, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much to the organizer for this very kind uh, invitation. It's a great pleasure, but also a uh, pressure because, uh, I mean, talking with uh, such a uh, big name, so many big names in this panel, so I will do my best to try to bring uh, some uh, food for thought about this uh, South China Sea dispute, knowing that it's not the my main research interest, uh, but um, uh, by chance I was reading the, this book, The Trojan War Will Not Take Place. I mean, besides all my uh, Peppa Pig and uh, Paw Patrol for my kids. And, but I think that this book can help enlighten the uh, issue right now in the South China Sea. So maybe two parts in this presentation, uh, just at first glance to begin with, uh, Maybe it makes sense now to question or to wonder whether this issue now is not, I mean, to try to match with the title of this panel, diluted into uh, the Indo-Pacific, whether this uh, uh, issue is becoming uh, uh, not, the, uh, not anymore a central track to topic for experts. I refer to what I have experienced uh, previously on piracy. This was my main research interest with a uh, up and down uh, whether it's trendy or no more trendy. And indeed for South China Sea, it's very difficult to conduct field research, to access to archives, to map, and uh, no big recent event like the award in 2016 recently. I got this uh, research paper by uh, Risk Intelligence about the, whether there is any um, major impact on the trade, eventually not so much, not any big impact on trade as well. And eventually there is a risk of uh, uh, circular circulation of information, people uh, keeping uh, inviting, uh, quoting uh, each other. Uh, for that, uh, ideally, uh, to double confirm or not, uh, I, I would like to check the, maybe the publication presentation on this topic, also the move of experts precisely on this issue, from this issue to another other uh, topic field, and also the repetition of South China Sea in official or white papers. Uh, because not so many uh, repetition or uh, South China Sea formally in the EU paper recently. Uh, while I remember how uh, Mr. Le Drian, the French minister uh, for, for uh, in this time for foreign affairs, no, for defense, uh, was very vocal on South China Sea in 2016. But so far now, no more Shangri La dialogue, but also the speech in Shangri La dialogue could, should be very informative. So eventually, uh, I feel that uh, maybe South China Sea is no more the only driver, the main game changer, talking about uh, security uh, issue in the region. I mean, previously maybe the security issue, uh, I mean, uh, the regional security was moving around the South China Sea, but now maybe South China Sea is one of the main issue in the region. Um, if I move, and it's more important, maybe more interesting uh, to the States now, also, maybe it's maybe not anymore the core only absolute topic. Uh, if I consider first the big powers, uh, many other tools now for China to increase, I don't know, its influence, uh, hegemony, imperialism, benevolent hegemony, I don't know, but so far to increase its influence, BRI, uh, vaccine diplomacy now, I would like to work on also whether China can be part of anti-piracy organization, a recap, I see, uh, nowadays in uh, Singapore. And there is maybe no reason to jeopardize this soft power and its trade with any conflict in South China Sea. Uh, and also many other front lines uh, for China and USA in Indo-Pacific precisely, either uh, physical ones, I mean, in Malaya, with India, Hong Kong, the Mekong Basin, we'll talk about that, Taiwan, Burma, of course, uh, all these uh, I saw article troops along the border. Uh, and also I see this paper about the nuclear silos or silos, I don't know, S-I-L-O-S um, in, uh, in China. So, so many other uh, front lines or tools for China and even uh, talking about trade wars or cyber wars. Uh, 
regarding the second rank powers, uh, I include France. I include France, Germany, and UK. So I think that maybe South China Sea is more a kind of springboard uh, for their IP Indo-Pacific strategy uh, to use this South China Sea issue to promote their own values, freedom of navigation, et cetera, rule of order, etc. Uh, and if you consider now the littoral states, uh, I remember a seminar I attended at the beginning of this year. So the all the experts were talking about COVID, 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 first uh, uh, election, investment. We have also this regional uh, comprehensive economic partnership now. So not only South China Sea, so that's why it takes to uh, um, keep distance. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, all of them are either diplomatically divided vis-a-vis -vis Beijing. Uh, last example in June, last June, uh, one month ago, this meeting, between ASEAN and China, and how difficult again it was to to get uh, consensus for the final uh, statement. And also, uh, uh, every country are internally divided vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, China. No time to elaborate about Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, but you, we could consider all the various actors at the domestic scene, the ministries, armed forces, political parties, experts, and also the various concerns whether they focus on sovereignty or on investment infrastructure. I remember this uh, wind turbines in Vietnam, cooperation between Vietnam and, and uh, China also in the Gulf of Tonkin. Um, so, but this maybe for in the paper, where I will have uh, time to, to elaborate. But uh, of course, uh, maybe it's time to call uh, Cassandra on the stage. And uh, because there is no reason to drop the guard, and uh, China definitely is still very active uh, in the South China Sea. But now, we, via various uh, levers, uh, previously, uh, China used uh, oil rigs, you know, to Vietnam in the Vietnam EEZ. Now, aircraft carriers, so it's quite concerning and uh, uh, more worrying. Uh, again, still, I mean, the militias and their escorts, uh, you can refer to the work by uh, Andrew Erickson. Uh, the last uh, law on Coast Guard in February 2021, also which gave uh, more power to the Coast Guard. There was a panic first, now no more, but still uh, definitely this Coast Guard have more power now. Uh, on the think tanks scene also, now you have this uh, South China Sea probing initiative to mirror the AMTI uh, CSIS uh, and to answer all the tweets, etc., coming from uh, USA. Research vessel, drones in Indonesian waters, uh, even uh, at the administrative level, new districts in the South China Sea, precisely to show that it's still a main concern for, for China. Uh, we could give some uh, examples and to uh, detail any case studies uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia. Uh, but AMTI uh, CSIS recently published an interesting paper on Kaswari in. Um, in Malaysia, uh, Philippines, of course, but maybe uh, better to focus on 2020 and all these not verbal from many countries, uh, including the E3 group, uh, France, UK, Germany, Brunei, surprisingly also, uh, Malaysia, not so, uh, we know the Malaysian quiet diplomacy, but see for once more vocal. So this was very interesting and meaning that it's still a, a key concern. And it's also for China a key interest. So that's why it's better to keep an eye on this uh, issue. Maybe not so much about trade and oil, as I said, but because China has to sustain the facilities on all these islands, uh, China need uh, to <laughs> fish, I mean, to nourish, to feed its population. There is a kind of securitization of fishing over there. Uh, you can see the summer ban, unilateral summer ban by China. Uh, China need uh, this uh, sea to maneuver for the submarines. One, because they can use the South China Sea like a bastion. Uh, I had a talk with uh, Lin An about that. The submarines are maybe too noisy, so better for China to use them in a safe, secure uh, area. And also the South China Sea can be useful to send uh, all these submarine uh, away, I mean, and especially in the Indian Ocean region. I refer to the work by my good friend and a brilliant colleague, uh, François-Xavier Bonnet. You, you have the reference of this paper in English about all these uh, undersea routes 
for the submarine. Um, Prof who, who this morning also talk about uh, this award uh, to somebody precisely to show that for China also uh, China is uh, there is no no time to for retreat they are still there and this is their uh, places and also a French colleague talked to me about maybe to use the Prata Islands you know uh, occupied by uh, Taiwan possibly uh, like uh, as a test and uh, maybe to connect eventually as uh, a South China Sea issue with the Taiwanese uh, issue. And last, uh, UNCLOS is still complex, ambiguous. And because of that, uh, because it's not so clear about the military activity, the scientific activities, uh, maybe uh, it can be, so we can have some room for uh, or opportunity to, for escalation of violence. Uh, this is the last slide. And uh, to conclude, maybe some pending question and concerning question, uh, what about the phone up freedom of navigation operation? Uh, USA, uh, with the Biden administration, there is no less uh, phone ups, uh, still a lot. And uh, USA is pushing Australia to come on board to, pro to, to proceed with phone ups. France will send, uh, uh, I mean, regularly send a warship in this region, but it's not uh, War uh, for not because not within the 12 nautical miles, Germany, UK. So let's see what will happen after that. Uh, what about the non Chinese and non naval actor? I met uh, NGO which try to put together all the uh, regional uh, law enforcement agencies at sea. So will it be enough to avoid any escalation of violence? I'm concerning also by this autonomy or not of this uh, Coast Guard in the southern part of China, uh, whether there is direct instruction from Beijing or not. And because of that possible uh, um, uh, unexpected uh, encounters at sea, and that's why we need this code uh, precisely to avoid any escalation of violence. Any arms race, but uh, you can have a look to this paper by, by Evan Laxmana, who was saying, no, if there is, a, uh, there is no arm race, and it's not because of China, it's more because of modernization, but uh, still it's a concern. And last two points to finish quickly, I was wondering whether there is a Southeast Asian specificity, because this code of conduct, well, we talked so much about that, and I remember this Australian to, uh, talking about that like a bond, meaning uh, I give you a, we talk about declaration, guidelines, framework, single draft of the code of conduct, but it's just pretext to postpone, postpone, postpone all the time. So uh, I don't know if we should expect any formal uh, agreement and no time to elaborate, but uh, I, I liked uh, the, the, this book by a colleague, um, Olivier Schmidt in France and his colleague about the different temporality uh, in Southeast Asia and maybe in USA or Europe to, to appreciate the situation. And last point, uh, I think that eventually it's not only a, a specific Southeast Asian issue because it's a new way precisely now to have, um, to consider the conflict, no more duality, peace, war, but we have to be aware that now you have, that's why I, this 50 shade of gray, you have a continuum from peace to war and see all these paper about fourth generation of war, hybrid warfare, vague war, et cetera. But maybe I think it uh, would make sense to worth to reading on, uh, this article by both on peace war, uh, whether the situation now echo what happened in Europe before World War II. And uh, I think this, uh, this idea of peace war could make sense also in the Pacific. This is my last idea. I would like maybe now to focus more also on the Pacific. I feel we have not enough research on political science, international relations. I had the opportunity to talk with, with some colleague over there and we have maybe to keep an eye on what China can do over there. See was a flotilla of uh, fishermen of Chile. This was uh, last year. So uh, Pacific Ocean maybe is a new pioneer front for research and China. Sorry, I don't know if it was too long, but uh, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>